third. Kobe. Crawford. Hogan. You are now tuned into the chat room. chat room, your favorite baller's favorite podcast. Welcome back to the chat room podcast. This is episode nine. I am the senator and with me today, I got Coach Francis. What's going on, y'all? We also got Dwayne in the building. What's up? And with us today, today's episode is going to be a very special one. We got some really dope Canadian ballers that are playing in america can you believe that but for me i can't even do them justice by introducing them so i'm gonna let them introduce themselves hi my name is kill walters i'm a 6'3 junior i go to the university at buffalo and i'm originally from toronto ontario by keelan eglinton jeez <laughs> well oh, yeah where you going jeez keelan eglinton Hi, um, I'm Ivani Jim. Uh, I'm a six foot freshman from Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington, and I'm originally from Calgary, Alberta. Nice. Cool, man. As you can see, Coach Francis always has his state gear on. He has to represent to the fullest. So. Hey, man, it's, just, it's, it's what it <laughs> is, man. <laughs> Not always. Hey, hey, last episode, I was wearing uh, my... That's because you packed everything away. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, how are you guys feeling today? You guys are doing good? Uh, yeah. I mean, I was doing great last night. I was I was doing really good. Lakers won. You know, Bron did his thing. Here we go. Here we go. I was, I was feeling good. And then, go. and then, and then, you say the GOAT? Mm-hmm. I, I, I love LeBron. Okay. Mm. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, but like it was it was good last night because my my Instagram was quiet. Nobody commented or nothing. Like after game one, I was getting so much DMs. Everyone was just getting at my neck saying Lakers are gonna lose. And then after last game, everyone was like, Braun is washed, and Braun silenced that last night. I didn't hear nothing. It was a great night last night. <laughs> okay. Good, man. okay. So for those that don't know, we're recording this on a very special day. Happy birthday, Kobe Bryant, which is the reason yeah. why, which is Happy the reason birthday. why Coach is even more happy about the a whole situation of Lakers winning last night because they did it in memory it of good, Kobe man. today. So um, Mamba, Happy Mamba Day. So uh, let's jump into the first one. Hey, hey, all hey, right, all right, on the, all right on, here we go. On that note, on that note, Kobe, Kobe better than LeBron. Well, we can go move forward, though. That's facts. Move forward. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> hey, man, you know, you know, anytime I get an opportunity to plug Kobe, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm wearing my Kobe-inspired bracelets today for Mamba Day, so you know. Um, let's jump into the first quick question for everybody. Um, what's everyone's favorite show to watch if they're not hooping or playing video games or just during this quarantine time? What was your favorite show to watch? Um, I mean, obviously, like, the games going on, the bubbles, you know, like, both and both WNBA and NBA. I've been watching both of those, but, like, just for, as far as shows and stuff, my show that nobody knows, but, like, I watch it, the 3%, like that that show on right now on Netflix is popping, is back. And then another show I've been watching is The Rain. That's back on Netflix. Um, but yeah, like the last few days I've I've been I've been binge watching garbage movies like uh, <laughs> Project Power. I watched I watched on Netflix. Oh, you thought trash. that was garbage, man? I, really? That was, that was good. Yeah. That movie was good. Was good oh, movie. Come on, <laughs> Francis, man. Oh, Francis, we can't no. talk about movies then, man. Come on. <laughs> That movie was good, no. man. What? That was a good movie. No. Yes, it was. Oh, I wasn't sure. Listen, I wasn't sure if it was a Marvel movie or I wasn't sure what it was, man. I was just, I was confused the whole. This guy's dissing these movie. indie movies out here. People trying to get ahead and trying to do something different. No, I, this and hard. I mean, I, I, listen. At the end of the day, make your money, do your thing. But that was hot garbage. Oh gosh. <laughs> See, anyways, to me, to me, to me. So yeah. All right. Okay. But, yeah. Let's see. 
Yeah, yeah, it's the thing is with me, I watch way too much stuff. I know. Like, I, always, <laughs> I can always occupy myself. If I'm not golfing, I can always occupy myself with watching something. So I think I've been watching a lot of, um, it's a lot of Netflix stuff that I've been watching. Um, let's see, just a, whatever movies that come out. I can't, there's too many to list, but whatever movies came out on Netflix. Um, all those like narcos, I through the whole pandemic, especially, I binge watch all that stuff, like all of it. Yeah. Narcos, like, Mexico, yo, Narcos, I killed um, Marco. the Pablo Escobar one. What, what's that? I can't remember. El Chapo, El Chapo, Chapo, Chapo. Yeah, yeah. all that, yo, all I those shows. That. I killed that within like a week. That was yeah. That was, <laughs> yeah. I ran through I, that. I was done. I, I watched Unsolved Mysteries because yeah. that was like a throwback to watch that. So yeah, I've just been watching random stuff. And then like I will always be searching for indie movies online. So I just want to watch a lot of indie movies. You guys will never know what these movies are, but yeah, that's what I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Everyone, Gila. Um, I've probably been spending most of my time watching The Last Dance. Um, mm. just trying to get that on. Um, prior to like quarantine and like we first started, um, when I was at home, I feel like I'd watch um The Price Is Right a lot with my mom. So that's like a classic <laughs> show that I watched in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Price Is Right is popping. My, 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 like, I don't know, like, I've been watching, like, before, like, some, like, there's, like, a game show network on, so I've been watching, like, uh, Family Feud, I didn't know about, they had all these games, like, there's some weird games, me and Sandra have been watching the other day, like, um, there's, there's a bunch of weird games, man, there's, there's a Family Feud, what, what's that game we were watching the uh, other day, Sandra? Which one, The Wall? The Wall, you're watching The Wall, we, we watched, um... Lord's Lava. Oh, that's your, that's Lord's, just a great Lord's game. Lord's Lava. And then there's the other one we were watching, the the um the lie the one the lie detector one. Oh, uh, moment of truth. Moment, a of, moment truth. of truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've been Jeez. watching those two. Yeah, so we don't get, I mean, those. Yeah. A moment of truth was the one where they used to mess people's life up by. Like, yeah, they used to destroy their. You life. tell one lie and you lose <laughs> all the money. <laughs> like, <Jeez>. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Never watched that. Panther? No, I never watched that one. It's on YouTube. Go check it out. I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting all, all y'all on. Go watch Moment of Truth. All right. Okay. All right. And, y- and, and y'all will get a good laugh. And it was so right. bad because it was so bad because it was hosted by the guy that used to host Cheaters. Yeah. And oh, really? So, that dude? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it used, to, it used to be crazy. They did like two two seasons and then it got too much like, it got too hot. They had to cancel People's- People's mm-hmm. lives were getting ruined. Like it was, yeah, and people getting destroyed. I'm sure there's probably, crazy. yeah, some, some, something happened. Someone tried to cut someone in that show. There has to be something <laughs> that happened. Uh, Kiyo, what, what, what are you watching? Um, right now, I'm mostly just watching like throwback shows. Like I like Fresh Prince, Moesha. If I've been watching, um, The Parkers, which is a spinoff. So like anything related to that, like one on one. I've mostly been watching like movies like Crooklyn, like old school stuff I would watch uh, with my mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything my mom would watch, I was watching like those See, type of those stuff. Those are good stuff to watch, man. Those yeah. are some classics right there. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing it better than a lot of shows. inspiration for like hairstyles, fashion and stuff that I want to bring up this year. So anything that gives me inspiration mostly. But yeah. Not that Project Power BS. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good movie. <laughs> Um, as for me, to tell you the truth, I am so embarrassed to say this, but I got to say it. Say I know you're going to say it, man. Ever since I uh, tore my Achilles a couple weeks ago, I have, well, I started a little bit beforehand, but I have finished all 16 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. Um, it's wow. good, though. It is good. I really... <laughs> hate all the characters except for two <laughs> and they're the only reason why i kept watching because i wanted to see what happened to them but if i have to say my favorite show right now to watch it's a show called love after lockup and it's literally about people that are outside that go on a dating app to date people that are inmates and it follows their life after they get out of jail it is the wow. most ridiculous show that in the world. That seems interesting. But I, but it's on YouTube. That seems interesting. It is. No, YouTube, YouTube is pumping out all these it's, wild shows. It's, 
It's so ridiculous, but it's so hilarious. That's like mm-hmm. uh, that that other show, that ninety day fiance stuff, man. It's kind of like that, but <laughs> it's 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 it. The reason why this one is kind of is a little bit more ridiculous is because these people have like some of the craziest rap sheets, and then they're and then they they really put their trust into them. And one guy even like paid the five thousand dollar bond for the girl to get out, and then. She's like, hey, I might miss, I might miss my court date, and he's like, well, if you miss it, I'm off fifty thousand dollars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, so like, now I gotta see how this whole season turns yeah, out because, because it's pretty ridiculous. So, either that or marriage boot camp, because I've been, because corrupt from the dog pound is on there, and it just gets ridiculous and re- more ridiculous each episode. So, <laughs> those are my two, my two shows right now. Um, all right, here's the next question for everybody. You have to create your all time starting five using WNBA players and NBA players. So you can either have three WNBA players and two NBA players, or two or three NBA players, two WNBA players. Okay, okay, all right, so. Who's gonna start? I'm gonna start. We can, we, we can have we can have the, um we can have um Yvonne and Kiko start okay, with right, this one. Right. Okay. Yvonne, you can start. Okay. Um. Probably for me, I go Diana Taurasi, Elena Belladon, Liz Candace, Damian Lillard, and Kawhi Leonard. That's tough. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy That's line. Tough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's All right, can we put a pause on this mm-hmm. podcast so I can rethink my 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 choice? <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. So who? So you got you got you got Tarazi at the two, Dame at the one. Yeah, go. Nah, it's a it's a crazy lineup. It's a crazy That's lineup. Mm-hmm. We don't, but we don't got to go position, right? Just like you're starting. Oh, well, you were yeah, in position. Yeah, you were going to start at five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot easier if it was just the you best players. Cheat, <laughs> no, you can't cheat. No. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm good right now. I got. Uh, so I got. Wait, like you like you like you always. Like, okay, like, all right. Okay, 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 okay. It's you're so okay. itching. You're so itching, man. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I got LeBron right now as my small forward. I have Candice. I have Sue Bird, because first of all, her passing skills, ability, and look who's on her team. LeBron yeah. and Candice, they're going to catch yeah. everything and make that. Yeah. Mm. At my five, I was thinking Asia Wilson because of her dominance. And like just her impact in the WNBA, and it's only like what her third going into her like third season. So like yeah, she would be my five. But I didn't really have I don't know. That's all I had. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, coach, you were chomping at the bit. <laughs> so hey, so at the gate, y'all can't say I'm cheating, okay? So I'm putting Braun at my one. That's cool, right? I mean, oh no, we did. I'm not we're going based off of That's their actual right? positions, no, no. though. Because I, no. I had a feeling yeah. Francis was going to do that. That's why I'm hey, like, yeah. Yeah. Braun is listed as the one this year, is he not? Man, we had this argument on, on the coaches' episode. It's like, <laughs> Francis always trying to get away with it. All right, man. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. Fine, fine, fine. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take him out. I'll take him out. So I'll go. So I'll go. Skyler Dig is at the one. Okay. I'll go Tarazi at the two, Kobe at the three. Um, I'll go KD at the four, and I'll go uh, Dream at the five. So I'll go Elijah one at the five. So all, all, all of my position, even though I was gonna put Braun at the one, and but like but you guys, you guys threw me for a loop, man. So I had to, I had to. Put on you have to improvise? All right. Yeah, I was going to go, go Brock the one, Tarazi, um, Kobe. I was going to go uh, Kenneth Parker, and then Shaq. 
So I got, I got about three guys, three people who could pass the ball, a shooter on the perimeter, and a dominant guy on the inside. But y'all, y'all made me change it up. So that's my five. Sorry, I guess. I don't know what to say. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dwayne, who you got? All right, let's see. So I got Sue Bird, Tarasi. Yeah. Um, at the three, see, the three is always the tough one for me. Um, um, let's see. I think I'm going to go with, and the three is always a tough one for me. Like I never can pick a three. Um, you got, I'm a, you know what? I okay. Listen. I know. Hey, put some, I, hair, uh, put some I, hair in the chest and pick Pascal Siakam. <laughs> Yo, man, as much as I know, I can't do it, man. I like, I love him, but I can't do it. Um, I'm going to come back to that one because that's always a tough one for me. At the four, I'm going to have Tim Duncan. And at the five, I'm going to have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. At the three, oh. Oh, come back to me on that one. Come back to me on that one. That's a really hard one for me. Come back to me on that one. That's a hard one. All right, so I guess it's time for my list. Um, Nash at the one. Sarasi at two. KD at three. Candace Parker at four. Shaq at five. Hey, I'm going to make one change, though. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to take out uh, Skyler. I'm gonna put in uh, Don Staley in there. That's all I'm putting. Okay. Mm-hmm. My one. I mean, I put my, my, I have my one actually. Think about it. So. You know, normally we don't deal with amendments on here, but you know it's hey, okay. Man. We'll we'll allow it this one time. <laughs> I had my one already. <laughs> I had my one. Man. I had my one. All right, Dwayne, who's your three? Yo. So, I can't pick my own. I, 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 I can't. Hey. It, it's too hard, man. You going with us? Because I know if I pick one, I'm going to change it. Go Just on. go with Siakam. You're good. Siakam or Toronto Kawhi? One of those you're going with, man. You know what? Uh, Boy, you can I, go Middleton. I, no, I, I'll pick Kawhi. I'll pick Kawhi. I'll pick Kawhi. Yo, yo, yo. You know my heart, man, but. I, I know you want to go with uh, Siakam. <laughs> I'll I go for I pick quiet, I pick quiet, I pick It's so hard because I, I changed it like 18 times, man. I'll go quiet. I'll go quiet. <laughs> yeah, I'm still shocked he didn't choose Aaron Gordon on his list. So no god. No oh, god. We're not doing I this mean, today. We're not doing we're going, this. <laughs> we're going top five dunkers, maybe, but he, he's not in no other list no. other than that, man. Yeah. It was a dunk list. Top five dunkers, maybe. All right. Maybe. He hasn't won a dunk off yet, so I can't even, even say that. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to want to try to win a dunk yeah, off yeah. after what's been going on with him. So, a top five right. NBA rapper. Nah. No. Absolutely not. Okay. That's a whole nother podcast. That's a whole nother podcast. All right, <laughs> All right Coach. What you got? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, for the for the ladies here, um, take us through your, your journey. Like, how did you guys get to where you guys are right now? Like, what was the like? What was um that that whole journey like? Honestly, for me, it started off with just playing basketball at school and at boys and girls club, and always seeing like the people around me in my neighborhood playing basketball, mostly boys, because I never really played with a lot of girls when I was younger. So like seeing them and seeing like my older cousins and stuff like that, and my uncle playing basketball always made me want to get out there and play. So I initially started playing at Recreation Center, like with um, Toronto Triple Threat when I was younger in the eighth grade, but I never played on an actual team until I entered high school and went to Oakwood. And then I played for um, Brampton Warriors. So my mom would drive me like an hour all the way to practice after school and high school just so I could play there in the Jewel League, which was one of the best leagues in Ontario at the time, so I could get exposure. And then she would bring me all the way back home to Toronto And then I would wake up early for school the next day and still have homework. So with me, it started off with like a lot of dedication and sacrifices from my mom to begin with. And like, that's what really got me the discipline and dedication to get where I am now and be in college. And then think like now things being so structured and in order is like luxury because here 
Like they have everything in order for you. Like the gym is right there. School is right here. Everything's in like a confined area. So like just the journey from here to there, it was just like the constant focus on the bigger picture. And like in the moment, it was difficult because it's like, why do, why would I want to have to put so much work into something you don't know that's guaranteed? You know what I mean? Because like coming out of Canada, it's like you think, oh yeah, in Canada, like, oh, I could be one of the biggest girls. I could be one of the best girls here. But how am I going to get myself to that next level where the coaches will see me? How will I make myself one of the prospects like who's considered, oh, let's go out of our country and go recruit someone else from another place. So like all of that was just like basically doing what was necessary to get like separate myself from the people around me and try to get to the next level. And that honestly, that's what I've just been sticking with throughout my whole career. So that was the biggest point to get here. Sure, that's tough, man. That's tough. Um, for me, I started when I was around seven, probably with like a little like Steve Nash cap first camp I ever went to so um that's kind of like where I started with basketball I mean I also have like older brothers that play basketball my dad played basketball too my mom played a little bit a little bit of basketball too so I had a very basketball family when I was younger um but after that like um I kind of got into like more community basketball and I played that for a while with um girls that I'm really close friends with right now um and then after that like um, I guess people kind of see you at different stages of like where you are. So when I was um, playing in um, camps or whatever, somebody would come up to my mom and be like, oh, like you should try and put her in this thing, like see how that works for her. She likes basketball and stuff. So I go and then you keep on playing and then people see you in other places and say, hey, like, why don't you come over to my club? Like we can help you train and stuff like that. And from there, like I just kept being given a lot of amazing opportunities to grow as a player um, and just to expand um, my basketball skills on different teams. So from my club to Team Alberta to Team Canada, um, I was given those opportunities to show like what I can do and also to just learn and play with other people, girls across my province, girls across the country, um, and just grow from that player. And with that exposure going up in those levels, I was able to... um, get the attention I needed from schools in the state. Um, also playing down there in like um, different tournaments. Um, people love, people talk, they come around and see, especially um, if it's not only you, but if it's other girls on your team um, that are playing and wanting to go down in the states, getting recruited. Um, those are different stuff. Like that gives you more opportunities for people to see you and be like, oh, hey, like I came for this girl, but this girl's also nice. We'll talk to other people about it. So a lot of opportunities came out of just getting to play on different teams at different levels, um, getting um, different exposures across the country, um, both in Canada and the U.S. So I think that's what really helped me get to where I am because if I didn't go up and play in, uh, um, on the older team or if I didn't take that chance to go to this tournament or whatever, um, I probably wouldn't be given the opportunity, the amazing opportunity I have right now. So just making sure, um, I don't know, taking like risks and stuff just to get to where you want to be is kind of like my little journey. That's nice. That's nice. It's, see, it's always amazing to me to hear like the stories and the journeys of certain of players, like just that grind that they that they that everyone has to get to that next level because yeah. you don't hear that. Like those are the ones you can distinguish. Like you know what? Those are going to be good players. They're going to be great players. They're going to get to those levels they need to get to. They're going to get to the WNBA, the, the ultimate goals and things like that. It's always good to hear those stories because you never, you didn't, you don't hear them too much, like the details in which, like, like just the work you guys are putting in, like behind the scenes, like the, the not, we're not, and not everyone's going to see that, but it's, it's always amazing to me just to hear it. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing with me is that like, I love hearing the story because everyone has a story, you know, everyone has a story. Everyone has a why. And both both of the both of the guests they kind of mentioned their story and their why you know right so like as a coach or as a, as a basketball fan in general like that's what's competitive that's what's competitive to me is just hearing that story like I, I'm always posting on Instagram but like 
various stuff about like your why and all that stuff and like that stuff hearing hearing that firsthand is always like i can definitely um uh, appreciate that so kind of um building off of that like um what was kind of like your welcome to the u.s moment like what was kind of like where you where you kind of like you, you're playing like provincially or playing like uh locally and then you went to the u.s you're like oh damn these, these girls are got some talent like the, the the level is different like what was that moment for you like Okay, so my moment was freshman year when we went to Stanford to go and play. Sorry, not Stanford. This was freshman year when we went to Oregon to play. This was early preseason, like about like our fourth or fifth game around there. And I actually got to play because our original starting big got a hit to the face that took her out of the game. She had a suspected broken nose. And at that time, Oregon was, like, around number three in the whole entire country, and we were playing them. And as a freshman, like I said, I was a freshman. I was like, oh, my God, like, I'm really about to go out there. And, like, this is nationally televised. Like, this is a 10,000 people occupancy, like, stadium. Like, there's a lot of people in here. Like, there's about, like, 8,000 people in this arena. This is crazy. Like, what am I about to do? I went on that floor, and those girls were as big as me. And coming, like, I'm 6'3". I'm pretty, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a good size. And, like, in Canada, like, a lot of the bigs I went against were not as, like, they would be as tall but maybe more skinny or be as big but maybe a, sh- a little shorter but never, like, my actual size. So when I actually went up against that matchup and went through that experience, I was like, oh, dang, like, the people here eat what I eat. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're my size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. these people are my size. And, like, in that moment when I saw, like, that was one of the best games of my career. Like, I had 16 points. That was, like, my career high of that entire season, like, as a freshman, boom. I was like, that was the moment when I was like, okay, I'm here. Like, what am I going to do? When it, Am I going to – am I only here because I went through these stages and I was able to, like, be smaller people? Like, what am I going to do when I'm going against some of my own size? And that was really my coming to America moment when I realized, like, boom, people are going to be as big as you. What are you going to do? Are you going to fold under pressure? Are you going to – match up to the are you gonna step up to the plate are you gonna make it what's gonna happen so that was really my coming to america moment like boom i'm here this is what it's like people are big this is how the game is played this is the speed and this is how we do it so um well for me um i haven't gotten to play any games yet because my season hasn't started i'm i'm a freshman obviously um but probably um, my coming to the U.S. moment um, was definitely with um, one of my club teams. We went down for a tournament. I guess we got slapped pretty hard. Um, it was kind of brutal, so that wasn't very much fun. Uh, but just playing in those games and being like, dang, like these girls are really good. Like, I want to beat them. I want to get better. I want to be better than them. Um, just like, even though I'm from Canada and you're from the U.S. and um, you guys are presumed to be better at basketball. Like, you know, maybe you're not. I'm going to be better. I'm going to show you that people from Canada can be just as good. So that's how I was like, you know what? I want to play in the States. I want to compete here. I want to play with this style of basketball. Um, I want to show them, like, what people from Canada are about. So, you know, getting out there and just playing with them and seeing that little exposure kind of, like, lit a fire under me. And I was like, you know what? We're going to go after this. And we're going to get it. And we're just, just going to work hard because um, mm. we want to be better. Um, we want to compete. And we just want to play basketball for, like, the fun of playing. So that's kind of, like, how I got my little to the U.S. moment. I was like, this is where I want to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's dope, man. Like, listening to everyone's stories makes me feel like even worse of a basketball player for terror. <laughs> Tearing my Achilles in a in a rec league. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have no com- I have no proud. I'm in the U.S. moment. I still haven't crossed the border. So, so. <laughs> oh man, uh, Dwayne, what you got? Um, all right. Let's see what we got here. Um. Toughest individual matchup you've ever gone up against? We can start with um, Kill. The 
be honest, to me, everyone's just a player. Like, everyone's beatable. Everyone's guardable. It's like, for me, it's not really the skill level that I compare myself to. It's more of a heart level. So I know, like, if I go my hardest, you're not about to outwork me and just have anything easy over me. So I wouldn't consider every any matchup harder than the other because I'm playing every person with the same type of intensity, like they're, the, like they're LeBron, like they're Kobe. I'm going to treat you like you're that level because that's just the type of person that I am. I go hard and I'm going to play you like how I play my defense with my team, how my coach would want me to play, the standard I would have for myself. And that's just – so there's no, like, individual I would say was my hardest matchup because I just go hard, period. <laughs> All right, love it. That yeah. confidence level is high, right there. Oh, I like definitely. it. I like it. <laughs> this is this is definitely an episode where I'm uh have like my uh the, the young club kids look at because yeah. I preach that all the time, all the time. I'm like, you gotta imagine yourself playing your idol because if you want to get to that level, that's how, that's that's the, the the consistency and effort that you that you definitely got to play with. So definitely, I rock with that a lot. Yeah, um, I kind of like um, Kiela's attitude. Um, I like the little, you know, you're any type of player. So I'll definitely keep that in the back of my mind when I go up against anybody else. Um, probably for me, um, a lot of the international players um, that I've gone to camp with um, or I've played with um, from Team Canada, um, it's hard to like single one of them out because you know you play different positions you might switch off with different people so it's hard to just tell but a lot of those interna- international girls they got game so you got to make sure you're keeping on their toes um can't ever let up whenever you want to um always got to play solid defense because they got some game in them so that's kind of like um i guess my toughest players that i've played against but i'm definitely going to start thinking of, of the way Kiowa does you know, you, you know what, Yvonne, I'm glad you brought that up because especially with in, 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 the, in the NBA world with the international guys, we know like the big time international guys. We know what those guys bring to the table in the NBA. And obviously when the international females get to the WNBA, we know how they stand out in that league. But we never hear about them before that. We never hear about them mm-hmm. really in college or high school. Nobody ever talks about those international women. And I know those girls can hoop because when they get to the NBA, these girls are always top 10. In the league, yep. these international girls. So it's really yeah, good that you brought up that point because people need to really recognize that a lot more. Like when these girls are in the college, in high school, like we need, they need to be noticed a lot more at that age. Yeah, and like it's also a big world out here. Like it's not just Canada and the U.S. Like there's girls from South America, from Africa, yeah. Australia, Europe, yeah. Asia. Like they're all around. Like girls from China, like they're big, they're fast. Girls from Australia, Australia. They're versatile. Those Europe girls do not take them for granted. Like, all those girls can ball. Everybody can ball, you know? So you can't just say, oh, you're from this country. You might not be as skilled as me. They are as skilled as you are. What would you mm-hmm. guys be doing match that face-to-face, you know? Yeah. And on my team alone, we actually have more international players than we have people from the U.S. Like, we have two people from the German national team, one from the Mali national team, we have people, three people from Canada, one including myself. We have a girl from, I feel like, Switzerland or one of those places. Like, most of our team is international. So people are really starting to recognize the international, like, the game and accepting it in America and wanting to incorporate what those other countries have to offer because the skill set of these different countries is so crazy to see because if you notice, like, I noticed some of my German teammates, they have more more skill like around the basket without using the backboard where my American teammates, for example, will be more like explosive and finesse, like with jelly and that type of like, (laughs) so like, it's just crazy to see how the game differs from different places and how like a certain player from a certain place could bring this aspect of the game, which could bring a whole team to another level. It's just crazy to see it, like to be around them and see what they bring to the table for real. That's nice. Nice. Definitely agree with that. All right, and, and with and with both of you guys, um, with COVID and everything going on, and now you guys are going to be going back to school. Have you guys faced any challenges with anything? Um, Mainly because of COVID. Um, definitely because of COVID. Um, gyms are shut down. Um, can't go work out. Can't go shoot hoops. 
got to find baskets outside and um, different parts that um, may be closed down too because of COVID. Um, I have like a basketball hoop um, in my driveway, but since my driveway is like planted, um, it's hard for me to like play what I want to play because ball knocks off my foot and it's rolling down into the street. So that's a little frustrating. You're getting um, that cardio in too as well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You're running after those balls and trying to dodge stuff. So a little agility and um, uh, conditioning in there. But definitely um, just when everything shut down, it was hard to like um, adapt and find those other resources because you're really reliant on what you have around you, um, whether that's from your high school or your college school, um, community, gyms and stuff like that. Um, it's just hard to, okay, well, now I have to take a backpack, put some cans in it, and use that as a weight for, like, a squat or something. So that was definitely challenging, just trying to adapt to, like, the new situation that was going on and new methods that you could use to, I guess, keep yourself um, going as an athlete and keep on improving, getting better, and um, working hard. I completely agree with everything Alon just said because that was completely my struggle as well. Because we've had, like, I know for myself personally as well, and you being with Team Canada and all that, we've had access to some of the best facilities, pot, like, imaginable, like AC, gym, weights, all clean, fresh, every weight you could imagine, multiple weights available, trainers there, weight, like, just not having the training room available to get stretched out or be in the ice bath has showed me how important recovery really is. <laughs> like this whole COVID situation has honestly just made me so much more grateful for the resources I do have now that I am back at school, but has also given me an arsenal of things to do if the world ever does do this again. Because now I know like the little resistance band things you could do, the natural body weight stuff that's available so that's what mostly I was doing to keep in shape during that time and I feel like it did help because natural body stuff like push-ups squats and all that will always keep you in shape for regular stuff like bench press and all that so the basic stuff like that but the cardio really took a hit mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah it seems like people really took a hit it seems like people have been just trying to be a little more creative with what you can do. Oh, but like yeah. it, when, mm -hmm. when those resources that you're so accustomed to were available, then all of a sudden someone says, nope, they're not. It's like, okay, yeah. well, I'm off my routine now. What do I do? Oh, yeah. So you, you got to just kind of come up with new and innovative mm -hmm. ideas. And I still need to get this working because things, yeah. it, it might not be like this forever. And I'm sure that the season will start at some point. So I still mm -hmm. got to maintain, I still got to get this working. So it's, it's, it's very interesting to hear that. And um, I would say for the both of you here, for the next you coming up behind you guys, the next female hoopers coming out of Canada um, that want to take their talents up to the next level, um, what, what, what would your advice be to those girls? We can start with Kyoa on that one. You can be anywhere you want to be. You can be anywhere you want to be. With that being said, I hate when people feel like because they're from a certain place, they're limited to that place. It doesn't matter if you're born in Forest Hill. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're born in Jane and Finch. If you see yourself somewhere, you can be there if you put in the work and take the steps to get yourself there. So that's all I, I wanted to say and just use Use the resources around you and be creative. You can make it. Solid. All right. Facts. Yep. Facts. Um, I guess I would kind of add on to like what Kiowa said. Um, but just um, for like those girls out there, don't limit yourself to anything less than what you are. Um, just like Kiowa saying, you can go wherever you want to go with hard work. Um, and also a great mindset, a great attitude. Um. And honestly, like a goal, a dream, something to look up to, something to look forward to, if you have that in your mind, um, just don't limit yourself to anything else. You want to go professional, then go professional. Put in the work, put in the hours, put in the time, sacrifice what you need to to get to where you want to be. Don't let yourself be limited to, oh, like, I don't think I'm not good, or this girl's a little bit better than me, so I don't know where I'm going to go when I want. If you want to go pro, go pro. If you want to go to the States, go to the States. 
if you just want to play high school basketball, play high school basketball to the best of your ability, but go full out with whatever you dream. Um, whether that actually is in basketball, also in life and um, in school. If you want to get your PhD or your master's, you go and get your PhD and your master's. Don't limit yourself to anything less than what you are because all of you guys across Canada have the potential, have the ability, have the skills and the resources mm -hmm. to get to where you want to be. Be mm -hmm. the best version of who you want to be. That's yeah. all I gotta say. Period. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Yeah. Y'all out here preaching. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, I love we felt that. No, we yeah. felt that. You can tell we yeah. felt yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yo, we we just got taken the Sunday service. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, we out here. <laughs> yes, sir. I love it. I know. I love yeah. it. So I got I got a question that you guys don't know is coming, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. So, coach, before you get into the gym to coach for say or see why right yeah, yeah. um Dwayne, before you get on the golf course and before you get to the first tee tea time uh, before you get to tea time um Kiowa, Yvonne, before you guys get to the court what is one or two songs that you have to hear what are one or two songs that pump you up to get you in the mood to do it's what tough, you're about man. to do the for me, it's different. It's so tough because I have songs I listened to when I was playing, but when I was playing hoops a long time ago. Yeah. And then I got I got songs I listen to like me going to work as a 30 year old man now, you know, like it's like <laughs> it's like, like level. Uh -huh. <laughs> like let's say let's say the most recent time that before you had to go coach, right? What was one song that you're like, I need to I need to I need uh, to put on. Get me right in that mindset. All right. So, so there's two. There's two songs that like you guys know. Like I love the like, not pause. Like I'm I. DMX is one of my favorite artists of all time. Yeah. Right. So, intro is my all time hype song. I okay. I, I, bump, I bump intro whenever I need to go. Like, like we we're playing pro, provincials this year against Ambrose. And they beat us twice in a year. And like, like we were, we were so so amped to go into go into that game. Like, they didn't know what was coming. Like, we were, we were ready to go. And like, we were bumping intro, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, so intro is one of my tracks. And my other track is Renegade, uh, Eminem, okay. M, and, M and J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, those have always been my two. All right, let's let's get some money right now, you know. But now as a, as a, as a as a grown man, it's uh, a lot of. Uh, Baby Shark and all that other stuff <laughs> <laughs> going on. <in> there. <laughs> oh man! Like, this like, guy's like, wow. Like I have a I have a Spotify playlist of all the all the Disney songs. So I got like I got that ready to go in my car. So it's just. Yo, know, coach be pulling up to the gym bumping little it's Einstein crazy, yeah. theme song. Yo, know? it's crazy, <laughs> crazy out here. <laughs> Honestly, like and and like and like. Guys look at me like I'm crazy, but like it is what it is, you know. Like I traded in my 300 for SUV, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know? Sacrifice. That's back. That's back. Still. That's back. Um, I say for me, before I before I tee off, uh, <laughs> um, um, it's for me. I I love this song, Nas. It ain't, it ain't hard to tell. I I bump that song. I prop I bump that song probably every day. I listen to that song. That's a motivational song. It ain't hard to tell. I excel, then prevail. Like that's through my mind every day. So that's the one of the songs that I'm always bumping. And um, I don't know if you guys heard of this guy. It's a guy, a white cat out of um, Oslo named Ivan Av, Ivan Avenue. But I listen to a lot of his music. He has a song called Circles, and that's a really good song. Just the songs about just not fitting into certain groups and certain like clicks you just kind of stand out on your own in this world you're your own person that's kind of the message with that song so i really like that song the mo motivational song that's tough okay so you guys already know i got a buffalo which is in the state of the new york so i have to shout out the woo pop smoke and say welcome to the party <laughs> That song, every time I hear it in the locker room, every time I hear it when we're about to have a game, I already know we're about to. It's over. 
welcome to the party. It's about to go crazy. We're about to, we're about to move. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's welcome to the party. Go to, yeah, shout out Pop Smoke. Rest in peace. Rest yeah. in peace. Rest in you peace. Caught, you uh, caught me off guard there because you're like, you know, Buffalo. I thought you were going to say some Griselda. I was like, oh. I was, I was, I was like that's what know? I thought she was going to say too. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I was like, she's going to go with Griselda. I was like, she's about to shout out the only group out of Buffalo. All right, let's do this. <laughs> no, I, I'm going with the whole state of New York. All right, cool. Okay. cool. All right. The whole Fair state enough. of New York. Fair <laughs> Rock with it, yeah. That, that last album was tough. It was fire, so. Yeah, it was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's kind of like genres. I feel it depends on my mood. I'm very like a mood type of music listener, so. I feel like I'm in a throwback mood. Like, I'll put on some throwback tracks, like Beyonce and Rihanna. Like, um, it really doesn't matter to me. I love how that's a throwback <laughs> track for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, with me, I'm thinking Color Me Bad and all this stuff. She said oh, Rihanna. Yeah. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm old, jeez. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie oh. to you. As soon as you said it, I looked over at the Wayne screen because I wanted to see your facial reaction. Like, I'm not. Oh I'm man, not I'm old. so old, man. I'm thinking I'm still young. Like, damn. That's what Dobash classified as now? Oh, geez. All right. Honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it just depends on my mood. Like, it could be any, any type of trash, but I could be in like a throwback mood. Like, I could be in a chill mood. I could put on some, like, slow music that I could just like vibe to just to calm me down or something like that but pretty much mood mood music for me yeah all right all right I rock with it uh for me before I play any sports it's literally I am not an angry person at all like I'm probably always calm even when I'm playing so like it's usually anything by Snow Allegra I just think her voice I is listen so to some, nice. Yeah, I listen to some snow too. Yeah, just, I listen to some snow. Yeah, she, I just think I love that girl, man. If I have to do something like, if I'm if I'm doing something to really get inspired, it's probably Jay Z's Dead President. But mm-hmm. it's okay. yeah, it's either Snow Allegra or Jay Z Dead President, and that's what I'm pulling up to. So I think I was listening to Woe last night. That Snow Allegra song, Woe. I think it was listening to last night in the car. Uh, yeah, I'm, I ain't gonna tell you the song I played. <laughs> he's not willing to share it. He's not willing to share that one. Just, uh, just go listen to anything by Snow. You're good. All right. Uh, so at this point right now, this is where we give everyone the chance to plug their social medias and anything else that they want to plug. So, uh, Vaughn, we'll start with you. Um. Well, I only got Instagram, so underscore Yvonne E underscore. That's pretty much it. All right, all right. You know what? Um, I just want to say shout out to everyone in Canada following their dreams, hooping. I hope that you guys all make it out. And just know that your city doesn't define you and your circumstances does, does not make you who you are. You can make it out of anything and be who you want to be. Um, my social media is at Kill Time K. Kill Time K. That's it. All right, all right. Coach. Uh, yeah, you know mine is uh real deal underscore Francis. Uh, that's it, man. I ain't got no plug. It's just Lakers and five. That's it, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, the way. Um, yeah, Instagrams Chaz underscore Tenenbaum. And um, the Twitter is in Cashern 10, C S S H E R N 10. And Raps will. Some I, I know. I know. <laughs> you know got and, <laughs> and, and Raps, raps are closing out to, Raps are closing out today. They're closed out today. They're better. Light, light little series. They, they better. We're ready for Boston. We'll be ready for Boston. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, Boston the last time they played, they put a whooping on y'all. Listen, man. We didn't show them our defensive cards. We didn't show them anything. We didn't show them anything, man. This is the real deal now. This is it's zero zero. Let's go. All right. Back zero zero. All right. You all, right. Right. all right. All right. All right. <laughs> and 
before I even do my stuff, uh, special shout out to Nick Nurse for winning Coach of the Year. Yeah, uh, that's a big award, and mm-hmm. uh, and the way how they presented it to him, I think, was amazing. Having his high old high school coach mm-hmm. uh, announce it, and then have Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet be the one to bring him the trophy, I think that was really dope. So, mm-hmm. uh, special shout out to that. And as far as for me, you can follow me at the Senator. Um, don't forget to follow. Don't forget to subscribe to the Not So Soft podcast too. Comes out every Friday with me, with my brothers, Kino the Great and Nino Rockwell. Um, don't forget to follow our Instagram at the dot chat room pod. If you have any takes and or you just want to ask us a question, feel free to send us an email, the chat room pod at gmail.com. And remember, we're going to be doing the, releasing this every Tuesday with special guests. And if we don't have guests, we're going to have some outrageous takes with just the crew. So just make sure you're always subscribing to us wherever you listen to podcasts, our YouTube channel, because we're going to have exclusive content on there every week. So before we go, we got to send a special shout out, a special thank you. Say it was our honor of having two wonderful guests, two wonderful hoopers, sure, yeah. two wonderful ballers that are now elevated their game from Canada to the States. And are about to make some real impact in the States and put Canada further on the map. So, sure. Sure, yeah. shout out and thank you to Kiowa. That's thank you for say. having us. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> and a special shout out to Yvonne. Thank you. It was so fun being here today. Thank you. Welcome, ladies. And this appreciate has been... Once. Yes, we definitely appreciate you on the show. Oh, yeah. And this... And this has been the Chat Room Podcast, your favorite baller's favorite podcast, and we are out. Out of here. All right, peace, easy.